Okay, last week, I talked about the cosmic calendar of, of this concept of, of taking the past 13.8 billion years of cosmic history, compressing it down into a single calendar year and examining, you know, major epochs and kind of lining it up. And one of the most important lessons from the cosmic calendar, purportedly, is that the insignificance of human lives and in human lives are insignificant. But it, it says, oh, okay, you know, like the last day humans arise, the last minute we invent writing, the last fraction of a second we build telescopes, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know the exact number, so don't don't bother correcting me because I'm making it up off the top of my head. Last week I talked about how when you look at physical systems, there's always multiple kinds of physics happening at multiple kinds of scales with their own time frames. And so picking one calendar is never going to work. And this is, this is, I'm about to tell you why it doesn't work for the universe. The universe itself is a physical system. The universe itself has different physical processes governing it has different physical processes operating at different scales and all these different physical processes you know march to the beat of their own drummer they have their own time frames and that taking 13.8 billion years and evenly chopping it up like this isn't gonna give you the right picture and especially especially it's not gonna give you the right picture of the early universe the early universe, because more stuff happens and more important stuff happens in the early days of the universe than the entire rest of the future history of the universe. For example, for example, I'll give you three examples. Take inflation, cosmic inflation, right? This event that we're kind of sort of pretty sure happened where the universe rapidly expanded, really rapidly. This happened this triggered when the universe was something like a billionth of a billionth of a billionth of a billionth seconds old lasted for something like a billionth of a billionth of a billionth seconds itself and in that time frame that 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 super fast time frame the universe became like 10 to the 52 times bigger like just way bigger just it inflated radically important epoch in the history of our universe, completely sculpted our universe as we know it today. It got rid of cosmological defects. It sowed the seeds for later structure by, by expanding tiny little fluctuations, making them bigger. These little fluctuations go on to grow up to become stars and planets and galaxies and all that. It flooded, at the end of inflation, it flooded the universe with radiation and particles, the same radiation and particles that we know and love today. And it happened like that. And on the cosmic calendar, that doesn't even register. That's like, not, it's like, you know, com in this compression where you're chopping everything up in, in even chunks, inflation happens like before you can even take your first breath and start talking about the cosmic calendar. And yet it's what, like the most important thing to ever happen in the universe. Or what about the formation of the elements, right? Hydrogen, helium, formed within like the first dozen minutes of the history of the universe. When our universe was a dozen minutes old and through a window of about 10 minutes, all of the hydrogen and helium and a little bit of lithium were formed. That was it. That was, that was our entire supply of hydrogen and helium. It's still present today. All of it happened. On the cosmic calendar, when you're compressing 13.8 billion years into a single calendar year, that's like, where is that? It's like right after... Like, like you haven't even like done your New Year's kiss yet. You haven't even finished yet. And already all the hydrogen and helium have formed. So if the point is to show how insignificant human lifespans are, well, in the time it takes to watch this video, the universe produced all of its hydrogen and helium. That's a big deal. Well, what about the cosmic microwave background? The cosmic microwave background was formed when our universe was about 380,000 years old. When it cooled, expanded and cooled enough to go from a hot, dense plasma to a slightly less hot uh, but neutral medium, released a whole bunch of radiation, that transition itself took like 10,000 years or so, which is a tiny slice of time. 
right? Humans have been walking on the earth for what, 200,000 years, something like that. When our universe was roughly the same age, you know, a few hundred thousand years, that's when this event triggered. We humans have been doing this whole writing thing for like 6,000 years or so. Well, it took Cosmic microwave background about 10,000 years to form about the same time. So if you're going to say, so if you're going to say uh, human lives are meaningless and inconsequential because they're short compared to the vastness of cosmic history, what about the cosmic microwave background? What about the generation of that? That was short. That happened relatively soon and it didn't last long. On the cosmic calendar, that's this tiny, tiny little slice. And yet it vastly changed the character of the cosmos. It was the last major phase change of our universe. I wouldn't call that insignificant. My point is, with the cosmic calendar, that just because things are short or don't take a lot of time, it doesn't mean they're not important. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Whether you disagreed with me or not, feel free to fill out the comments and let me know. And whatever you do, go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep supporting this show. Thank you so much for watching.